Hey there everyone, Phil Cho here and welcome to my channel. Core Keeper is a game that I covered recently and it's a combination of Stardew Valley, Terraria and Minecraft all in one game. So far I have been having a blast exploring the world and I have to say it's enormous, having so many different biomes, enemies and bosses. Today I wanted to talk about farming materials which can be found around the map and on enemies as well. I will cover farming mob drops like slime, meat and other miscellaneous things as well as farming minerals and wood, so I really hope this video helps you out. Also before we start, if you like this type of content and more, feel free to check out all my other videos on my channel, since you may find some more things you like. And don't forget to subscribe so you get notified of any of my future updates. So without any further ado, let's begin. The neat thing about Core Keeper is that you learn these farming methods from the monsters in the game, since they all use some types of farm on their own which you can find throughout the world. This is a really interesting thing that the developers added on purpose or by accident, but it's still something awesome for the game. When you're exploring the wilderness, you may notice that the enemies have similar farms to make getting materials much easier, and those can be found mostly at the wildlings in the Aronis wilderness. Since materials are really important to the progress of the game, and towards the late game you would need massive amounts of them. So today, in order to help you out, I will be showing you how you can get the best of it while not doing anything and just exploring the map. We will be copying the wildlings farms that are in the game at the moment and improve upon those so we can make the most useful farms for monster loot and materials that you can use for your own playthrough. These farms are mostly AFK farms so you won't have to do anything in order to get materials except gathering the few key items that are needed in order to make these farms a reality. First of all, we will be focusing on the monster farms, and for this you don't need any special requirements, except if you want to make it look good. You can either use a shovel to make a certain piece of land divided from the rest, so the monsters can't escape, or by just using a piece of fence to wall off a certain area. Before walling off the area, firstly, place two rows of the needed material, like the slime ground, poisonous slime ground or even the larva grub ground which in their description it's mentioned that after a while it attracts monsters. It's good to have two rows since for the larva ground it will have a chance to spawn pods, which will in turn spawn more monsters meaning more materials in the end for you. After which you can just place a single row of spike traps all around the middle part which will aggro and damage anything that's spawned in the middle while it's going around randomly. And last but not least adding one more layer of the monster material to increase the chances of more monsters spawning there. At the end, you will just need to place a fence around the whole build and just wait on the monsters to spawn, giving you so many wonderful items. There is a small issue for this however, if you are using only a fence, and that is monsters spawning outside the wall of area. And the solution for this is just by destroying the ground with a shovel and filling it with water to at least make it look a bit better. These types of farms work quite efficiently and they will net you a lot of resources in the long run. So far you can't automate that process even further sadly, but since the game is still in early access, maybe we will see more automation updates in the future. For the other type of materials, which is wood and ore, we have a much more smooth and truly automated process, which doesn't need your input from start to finish, and those types of farms are much more desirable by the community. The only problem for these types of farms is that you would need to be a bit further down in the storyline and to have farmed a considerable amount of resources from a variety of biomes. The main needed material for this guide would be huge amounts of iron ore followed by the scarlet ore and a bunch of gold and copper mixed up. To start with this build, first and foremost you would need a generator which needs 10 copper bars, 5 iron bars and 1 gold bar. This item is crucial since after a certain point electricity will be a must have for the game. You would also have to have an automated workbench in order to be able to craft machines like drills, cranes, conveyor belts and more, which are the most important items for the build. The drills are quite effective on all of the resources from ores to wood, making them quite versatile and needed for the things we will be making. Getting ore automatically in Core Keeper with the drills will be quite easy, since you first need to find the huge ore veins spread around the map. You have already probably seen those, since if you hit them with a the tool, it would give you a message that you can't mine it with the current technology. Placing the drills however around the ores and connecting those with the generator by wires 
will activate them and make them mine the resources for you. But this doesn't end there. To automate the process even further, you can add conveyor belts in a line all behind the drills, which will send the resources in a line until you stop those. The conveyor belts move even without the help of power, so those can be quite helpful. At the end of the line of the conveyor belt, you can add a crane, and depending on how many things you're farming, you can either add a furnace or a chest. Just a quick heads up about the machines in Corekeeper is that you can rotate them after placing them on the map. You just need to select the machine with the mouse and just click E, which will rotate it to your desired position. After doing all of that, you just wait and do something else until you visit the furnace or chest and see the amount you have gathered over time. And with that, you can just craft anything you like. For wood, however, it's a bit different and a bit easier as well. You just need to make a line of root seeds and or coral seeds, which will grow over time, leaving you with a stable wood supply. Farming these is also done with the drills, since it works perfectly for wood as well. On the one side of the seeds, you can either remove the ground or just place walls there surrounding the seeds, making them grow towards the other direction. You will leave one spot empty on the other side and just place the drill on the next spot turned towards the tree roots. Behind the drills you need to place a line of conveyor belts, which will funnel all of the wood towards the crane, which will pick the processed wood and place it in a chest, from which you can pick it up at a later date. You can either use a chest or straight use a sawmill, which will process the wood into planks. But for this, you will need to have one type of wood at one line of conveyor belts, so it will be optimal for processing, but you will need more lines and cranes to sort the items you farm. But this still depends on your choice. But everyone, that's it for today's video. I hope this guide helps you out with all of your core keeper farms, as this is more towards the late game, but still important nonetheless. What do you think about these farming mechanics? And do you have some of your own to share? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. I would really like to hear them. If you enjoyed today's video, consider leaving a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel so you get notified of any future update. I also have a Discord channel where we chat and get together so consider joining there as well. I would also like to thank all of my supporters on Patreon for their continued support. For now, I hope you all have a great day and I will see you all in my next one. But till then, stay safe!